In this video, I'm going to build an auto power off circuit on a custom PCB. An auto power off circuit, or also called latching power circuit, allows you to cut off power completely when the microcontroller is not executing any task, which is great to make batteries last longer in your electronics projects. This project has nothing to do with deep sleep, because with this approach your microcontroller doesn't consume power when it's not executing any task. We wrote a guide some time ago about assembling this circuit on a breadboard, but it's more practical to have it on a dedicated PCB as I plan to use it in multiple projects. This PCB is very versatile and it can be used with an ESP32, ESP266, Arduino or any other microcontroller. You can power it with a battery or any other voltage source. It can be turned on by different triggers, for example, from a push button press, motion detected with a PR sensor, a magnetic read switch, or any other digital sensor. This project was sponsored by JLCPCB. JLCPCB is one of the most popular PCB brands with more than 700,000 customers worldwide. It specializes in quick PCB prototype and small batch production. You can order a minimum of 5 PCBs for just $2 plus shipping which will vary depending on your country. Let's take a quick look on how the power off circuit works without going into much detail about the circuitry, because we have a dedicated guide explaining how it works in our blog. Just a quick reminder, the auto power off circuit cuts off the power completely, so there's no power consumption when the microcontroller is not executing any task, whereas in deep sleep mode there's always some sort of power consumption because your microcontroller is powered on with some of its peripherals shut down. In the latching circuit, you need an input for power, whether it's 5V, 3.3 or any other voltage. You need V-in and ground pins on this side. And on the other side, you have V-out and ground pins, where you'll get power to turn on your microcontroller. You need a pin that triggers the circuit to drive power to your microcontroller. When you send a high signal through this pin, the microcontroller will turn on, but only for a few microseconds. To keep your microcontroller powered on, you need to send a high signal from one of its GPIOs. This is called the latch pin. As long as the latch pin is set to high, you'll keep your board powered, so you can execute any task during that time. When you're done with that task, you can cut the power by sending a low signal to the latch pin. To power this circuit you can use a battery or any other voltage source. Keep in mind that the voltage on the input side is the same on the output side. If you want to power your ESP32 with a lithium battery, which outputs approximately 4.2 volts when fully charged, you need a voltage regulator circuit. This subject was already covered in a previous post, I'll leave a link below this video. The trigger to power your microcontroller can be a push button, a read switch, a PR motion sensor or any other digital sensor. To design the circuit and PCB, I've used EasyEDA.com, which is a browser-based software to design PCBs. You can find the link below this video where you can download the project files so you can customize the PCB, or you can simply download the Gerber files that I've used and order the final PCBs yourself. In my opinion, the most important step is to first ensure your circuit actually works on a breadboard before designing the final circuit. Creating the circuit works like in any other circuit software tool. You place some components and you wire them together. When you are happy with your circuit, make sure you assign each component to a footprint. Having the parts assigned, you can start by placing each component and when you are happy with the layout, make all the connections and route your PCB. Once you're done, save your project and generate the Gerber files. You can order your PCBs automatically by clicking this button. Or, you can go to jlcpcb.com, click the Quote Now button and upload the .zip file provided in the link below. After a few seconds, you should see a success message at the bottom. You can check the Gerber Viewer link to see if everything went as expected. 
you can order 5 PCBs of any color for just $2 plus shipping. Click the Save to Cart button to complete a purchase. I've ordered the PCB components from LCSC, but you can order them from any other electronic store. You can find the complete parts list below this video. In 4 business days, I've received the PCBs at my office. As usual, everything comes very well packaged and the PCBs are really high quality. The next step was soldering the components to the PCB. Although these are SMD components, I didn't find them difficult to solder. The resistors used are the 1206 package, and I've used the TS80 soldering iron. I recommend starting by soldering the smallest components, and leave the others or pins to the end. Here's how the auto part of circuit module looks like after soldering all the components. To test the board we'll connect the PR motion sensor to the trigger pin and apply 3.3 volts from a power supply. You can use any other trigger, like a push button, read switch or digital sensors with a threshold. I'll connect the latch pin to GPIO5. The latch pin is labeled on the silk screen as IN. Here's how the circuit looks like after assembling. Now, let's upload a sample code that keeps your board powered on for 10 seconds after a trigger signal. Start by defining the power latch pin. We're using GPIO5, but you can use any other pin. For testing purposes, we'll turn on this LED. In the setup, define the power latch and LED pin as an output. Next, set the power latch pin to I. When I set it to I, we ensure that there's power coming to feed the microcontroller. Turn on an LED connect to GPIO4. After the power latch pin is set to low, your board powers off and it also turns off this LED automatically. Next, for demonstration purposes, we keep the LED on for 10 seconds. After that, set the power latch pin to low. When it's set to low, the power is cut off and the microcontroller turns off. Add the task you want to perform after setting the power latch pin to high and before setting it to low. Your task can be making an HTTP request, publish an MQTT message, use it as a data logger, etc. Finally, let's test this setup and see it in action. When motion is detected, the PR motion sensor sends a high signal and there's power coming to the ESP32 that can be confirmed by this LED remaining lit. After 10 seconds, the ESP32 turns off. If we measure the power consumption, you can see the ESP32 is not consuming any power. It's completely powered off. This would work exactly the same for an ESP266, Arduino, STM32 or any other microcontroller. As you can see, the PR motion sensor consumes very little power. Even with a small battery, it would last years. But, if you're using a push button or a read switch, these don't consume any power. We hope you found this project useful and you can modify it for your own needs. You can read more information about this project and access all the resources in the project page. There's a link below this video. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to catch my next projects.